Those are the Wasafoli drummers, and we're so happy to have them here this morning as we continue to celebrate emancipation today because, of course, we will not be here on the actual day. So we're celebrating uh, our emancipation and the, the whole celebration of being freed uh, mentally, physically, and so many other ways here on the Now Morning Show. Now we are going to be chatting with some young people uh, from UWE. Uh, with us this morning, it's uh, two UWE students, uh, Nikese. Charles and Darren Thomas, and we're going to be speaking about a few topics that is surrounding, that surrounds emancipation itself. Good morning to my guests and welcome. Good morning, Carrie, and it's a uh, pleasure to be here, and good morning to all of you in as well. All right, and thank you for being with us this morning as well. So, I know there's an event coming up, but before we get to that, let's speak about the um, various topics that we're just going to cover here. Now, as young people, and going to school and what you would have learned about emancipation. I want to know from your point of view uh, what the significance of emancipation is to you personally. Well, good morning. Thank you again for having us today. Uh, emancipation for us as young black people, as young Afro-Caribbean people, means everything. Essentially, it reminds us of the resilience of our ancestors who really fought for the opportunities that we have today and who fought for their humanity in order to create a better future for us. So it essentially means everything. And I'm so grateful that in times like this, we could really take a moment as a nation to reflect on this very important occasion and our very brutal, sometimes bitter history. I want to hear, I want to hear that. I want to hear from you as well, Darren, uh, when it comes to emancipation. What does that mean to you personally? I agree with NKZ as well. You know, it all started from our ancestors who were enslaved. You know, um, the the price they, they fought to get freedom and to, to to keep that freedom. You know, so that is a very important thing to me in terms of being free and being being away from that um, colonization period. You know, so it's it's very important to me. Now, um, in school, in the history books, we would have learned uh, things from a perspective that is not African uh, many times and is only like in later years in your tertiary education and when doing your own research that you find uh, more of our truth. When it comes to your schooling and, and the studies that you would have done for um, on African studies, um, let me go with you first, Nikese. Um, what, did, what did you find was the disparity between the European story of emancipation versus the African story of emancipation? Well, I want to start with a quote, an African proverb. There's an African proverb that says, until the lion learns to write, every story will glorify the hunter. And we see that happening again and again in the way that history is told to us as black people, history is told to us as Caribbean people, even in relation to colonization. And it really leaves an impact on us mentally because it portrays the Europeans in a very superior light. And in this particular story, in this regard, they are not the heroes, they are actually the villains. And we are the ones that would have endured some brutality at their hands. And I think that uh, that history needs to be told from the get-go. I think it needs to be told properly in our schools, even from primary school level. I should not be learning that Columbus discovered Trinidad and Tobago. He did not discover it. There were indigenous people here before he even came. Uh, they, the land belonged to them, but it was stolen and taken away. And we need to start telling these stories the way they actually occurred. We'll be writing history from our perspective, because if we don't, our people will never really have an understanding of where we came from and where we are today and the significance of it. Definitely. And uh, Darren, you know, from a young person's perspective, do you think that you have been told enough about your African history. Do you think that there should be more levels uh, to, what, to what we are taught, uh, not only in schools, but even in our everyday lives from the people around us, parents and, and other leaders in the community? 
I agree, Carrie. Um, there's so little we have learned, and um, also in the school system, we have also learned so many wrong things, you know, especially like with Christopher Columbus and the rediscovery in Trinidad and Tobago and uh, how it was taught. We thought that it was something probably good, but they came here to to, to run their slave trade and stuff like that. So there should be more that should be done in terms of teaching and promoting the the right um, cultural aspect in terms of emancipation and how it really how it really started, how it ended, and how we can really bring about promoting this more in the secondary schools, the primary schools, and even at tertiary level. Um, before emancipation and before enslavement, you know, we have a rich history. You know, Nikese, what, what, what should we, when it comes to the, the teaching of that history before slavery and not only identifying ourselves as descendants of slaves, um, what should we be teaching our young people, teaching all of society really about our African heritage? Well, yes, you're so right. There is this prevailing narrative of uh, enslavement associated with Africans, especially here in the Caribbean. And while much of us indeed are descendants of slaves, we have to remember that, you know, enslavement happened, yes, but Africans were never slaves. They were enslaved. We had lives, empires, functioning societies before the colonization occurred, before the slave trade occurred. And there's great stories coming out of Africa, places like Mapa and Dupe, these great cities of, an, of uh, architectural stature that we never really learn about or hear about. And these inventions coming out of Africa, so many inventions, even in my field of medicine, there are certain gynecological procedures, et cetera, that originated in Africa, but we are never really told the positives. There's always this prevailing idea of savagery or like nothing, we had nothing before the European scheme and that's never the truth. So investing time and education into looking at our, telling the full picture of our history, the full picture of Africans, not as slaves, but as people who had uh, functioning societies before slavery and were enslaved and now we are really now trying to reconnect to whatever that culture may be. Definitely. Now, Darren, uh, UE has an event coming up. Uh, coming up. Tell us about it. Um, so UE is having an event for Emancipation Matters Part 2. Um, so this is an event which will take place in the form of a panel discussion by our um, various guest speakers. And this would be on the significance and the issues still facing the Afro-Caribbean community today. Definitely. And uh, how can we participate, how can individuals who are interested uh, log on or attend in, in what form? Okay, so before I go there, um, we have a, a wide range of panelists and guests because um, NKZ is also one of the panelists who will be there and she will be discussing um, on affirmative action in TNT, I believe, and we'll also be having um, a former minute, a former minister in the Ministry of Education, um, Dr. Lavelle Francis, and in order to view, well, persons can go to our St. Augustine, UE St. Augustine Gill of Students Facebook page or YouTube page, and they'll be able to view the program to learn so much more about emancipation. You know, there's a whole educational package sheet, a whole entertainment package sheet in terms of music, singing, dancing, spoken word. And this event is scheduled for 5.30 on tomorrow, oh, actually. Wonderful. Yes. Well, we look forward to that event and what is to come from it. I do hope it is well attended. And with that, I want to thank you both for joining us this morning and sharing your perspective as young people as pertains to the importance of emancipation and, uh, you know, what, what we as African descendants need to, to do one and, and need to learn about our culture and our heritage. I want to thank you so much, Nikesi Charles, and I want to thank you, Darian Thomas, for joining us this morning. Thank you. It was All, right. To be All right, continue to be safe. With that, we are going to take a little break. And of course, we're going to take that break in style with Wasafoli, who is with us this morning, all morning.